more than three to eight years after retirement. And then they, they, they refine that further. I wrote about it and it caused a bit of a stir. No one believed it, uh, but it's true. It's all CalPERS numbers, you know, I'm like, wow, because it's so counterintuitive of what, what a lot of these union guys say. And I think some of the union guys actually believe it because they read it in their union newsletter, so it must, must be true. Um, but they've refined it further. The longest living group of public employee retirees is police, followed by firefighters. Um, so, uh, so it's not true. So when I was on the Stossel show, again, when I, uh, they brought on to rebut me, they brought on this union guy from Sacramento via uh, video, and he, uh, and he happened to, oh, it was a godsend. He brought that, he goes, well, and he, he made that argument, and I just was able to hammer him, and the public and the people in the audience laughed. So that's progress, right? We're laughing, we're laughing at their lives. And um, so, uh, anyway, uh, let's see, I've been going on for a while. Um, uh, should, how much longer should I uh, talk some more? You want to get into questions? Uh, what, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, whatever you feel like. Uh, we have the room reserved till 8.30, but whatever. Okay, all right, I'll, I'll meander for a few. I always tell people it's like a switch. You turn it off, and then when you want me to shut up, I'll just turn turn off the switch and uh, <laughs> shut up. Uh, so um, a anyway, um, you know, so that's progress. Uh, my fear is that we're going to do just enough. We, why do I say we? The, the legislature uh, officials are going to do just enough uh, reform, uh, such as the reform that was included in the budget, uh, so that uh, uh, officials can champion that we've reformed pensions, but it won't really fix the system. And, and I don't want to make the current system sustainable. I don't think it's right that people in the private sector are going to work till they're 70 uh, and retire on a social security system that's probably not going to be there, so that public employees could retire at age 50 with hundred to $150,000 a year cost of living adjusted retirements with the best health care in the world. That doesn't seem like the right balance, right? Where the public servants aren't supposed to be our masters, they're supposed to be our servants. They're supposed to work for us. Um, it's, they should be paid a re you know, I think there are far too many public officials and government employees I think mo so much of what we can, what we do in this society could be done in the true private sector, and I don't mean just privatization. Privatization often is just, um, you know, using the force of government with the profit motive, right? We 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 give a special, um, uh, you know, it's often better than just the government providing a service. But there's certain things I don't want privatized because often private groups. Uh, they get a monopoly. They're, the government gives them a monopoly. So sometimes, if if you get like a, a government has a law enforcement, they privatize the law enforcement function. So what will happen is you'll get the law enforcement function done a lot more efficiently, which isn't always the best thing in the world, if you know what I mean. But the the private sector, um, the real private sector, can do so much. Uh, we just don't know it. We're, we're, we've basically become a socialist country. We just don't even, I, so I hate using the term, I mean everyone, all the Tea Party people throw around socialism. And it really isn't socialism because the government's not controlling all the means of production. But we, we have become a, 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 a society that's so, we're so dependent on government that we don't even realize uh, the many ways uh, that the private sector would do things better, cheaper, faster. I think a good example is, is the public schools. I, I had a debate with the superintendent of public schools down in Orange County, a really nice, deluded man. And it was in a group of teachers, so it was his group. And I was supposed to do the school choice side of the, the argument, which is fine, vouchers and charter schools and all that, that stuff's fine. But I didn't make that argument. Um, I argued that we should shut down public schools, but just shut them all down, return the money to people, and, and let us pay for our own kids' education. Why should you pay for my three kids' education? Why should I pay for your overpriced Berkeley education? <laughs> I, and just, what would happen? I mean, think about what would happen. It would, it would the system, you know, would be stunning. It's kind of like after the fall of the Soviet Union, a lot of people didn't know what to do because they, they'd never been confronted with those choices. But it would be an amazing thing. I mean, for... 40% of the state budget and just the state general fund portion of the budget goes to education. And that doesn't count all the local bonds and all the federal money and all this and that and the other thing. So this enormous amount of money would flow back to people and we would, uh, we would pay for our own schools, right? I mean, imagine if, if we bought cars, we made cars the way that we make 
we, we provide public education, the way we provide education, right? We, um, we would all be driving Yugos that cost $200,000. I mean, that's really, that's really true. I mean, and then we'd be tinkering with it, and we'd have these big committees that were, would be talking about putting on anti-lock brakes on the little crap box, you know? <laughs> and and that's, how, that's how we do schools, right? That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So um, anyway, I'm going off on a tangent, which I, I do all the time. Uh, but uh, the point is, so much of what we do with government, we, we, we shouldn't even, it shouldn't even be government. And then we don't have to worry about these pensions, and we don't have to worry about these salaries. Then the market could determine it. And, and the, the irony was my, my talk didn't go over that badly in a group of teachers. After, they were a little shocked at first, but I said, you know what? We need teachers, right? Whether, whether the public school, whether we do a monopoly Soviet-style system like we have now, or whether we have a free market system, you need teachers. And the good teachers, I'm sure you're all good teachers, will be paid probably twice as much as you're paid now, right? Because people will compete for you. And you'll have better working environments, and you won't have to be dealing with these uh, superintendents and their assistant superintendents and that assistant superintendent. And they're, you know, bureaucratic systems do not work well. And that's essentially the big problem here, uh, is we've created this enormous government system and lo and behold, uh, the, the government employees, the people who run the system supposedly for our benefit, uh, have managed to enrich themselves, plunder the treasury, and provide really crappy services to us. And then your fellow California voters, or those idiots who were at that protest that I only caught half of, are, 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 are oh, please give me more, you know, I, it's ridiculous. So here, um, okay, uh, this is from the Fresno or the second, oh, no, this one's the Sacramento Bee. This year, the city of Roseville, suburb of Sacramento, will spend as much to fund its pension plan as it does on parks and recreation. Uh, San Luis Obispo will spend five times as much on pensions as it does prosecuting criminals. They're taking all the money away, and they're, they're enriching themselves, right? And then they're giving themselves this enormous layer of protection. It's my daughter, Laura. And, uh, uh, and, and that's what's going on, and they're, they're, um, and then we're supposed to be grateful. I mean, in Vallejo, bankrupt city of Vallejo, uh, they're cutting police by a third uh, because their police captains make three hundred thousand dollars a year, and firefighters earn one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars a year. I mean, this is this is ridiculous. Um, Let's see, uh, I mentioned the 82% of, of California Highway Patrol officers with their, their uh, irritable bowel syndrome or whatever it is they come down with. So uh, th this, is, this is what I, I get into in the book. Uh, I could go on and on. There are all sorts of uh, scams that they, uh, the public employees pull to. For th these huge uh, pensions aren't good enough, so they have all sorts of double biffing scams and uh, all sorts of uh, ways to, uh, to further enhance their pensions. In California, uh, the final year's pay, their, their pay, their pension for their entire life is, uh, is determined by their final year's pay. So what happens? In every other state, they average three or five years of pay. So what happens? Like a woman in uh, Roseville, uh, she works for the state government, so she took a job in San Francisco uh, for one year and lived in some flop house for a year and her pay was you know went up by like forty thousand dollars because uh, I forget the exact number but a large amount because uh, you know San Francisco is a higher cost of living so the government adjusts the salaries upward and then at the end that permanently increased her salary for the rest of her life so so these are the kind of there are all sorts of scams of that sort um, and uh, so so a few few issues that we have to deal with is, 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 is getting, getting control of the, the pension situation, uh, reining in the number of public employees, uh, you know, moving to a more of a private system in, in many cases, and, um, and then there's the accountability issue that no one's talking about. People are now, the good news as I was saying, people are talking about the pension issue thanks to uh, Bell and some of the abuses, uh, but not many people are talking about the accountability issue. And we have, uh, you know, the code of silence, where police protect each other. Uh, we have the situation I pointed out with the teachers. You can't, you can't fire bad teachers. The whole concept of the civil service is that the employee owns the job. Can you imagine that? Um, and, and then you put union protections on top of that. So you can't, you can't discipline. You can't move the person around. You can't fire them. 
So uh, this is no way to run, uh, you know, a civilized modern society. At least one, you know, at least one that we want to produce good services and to operate uh, efficiently. And we wonder why the state budget uh, is, is out of control. So anyway, that's uh, that's my presentation, um, and uh, I'm hoping uh, you have some questions, yes, sir. <clears throat> why don't you consider a, a, an alternative approach? Uh, we have a court system where creditors can force uh, entities into involuntary bankruptcy and reorganization. And either an individual and or a class action suit uh, should be able to file an action and um, simply make the statement that the state is bankrupt and uh, the courts must um, reorganize. Well, I mean, if it, if it would work, fine, but it's, you know, who, who runs the court system? I mean, well, it's... Well, get notoriety of nothing more. Well, sure, anything. <laughs> I'm, any, any, I'm for anything that, that works. I mean, in Vallejo and... and uh,